Good day, my friends, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Daily Torah Broadcast, a ministry of the Messianic Discipleship Institute. Remember, you can always visit us online at mymdi.org and download previous episodes of the Daily Torah Podcast. If you're not a Daily Torah channel subscriber, click that subscribe button so you never miss a single episode. Today we are on day one of this week's Daily Torah series called Re'e, which means see. Yesterday we discussed Moses encouraging the Israelites and us that love and obedience to God are rewarded. Today our Torah portion opens with Moses challenging us to make a choice between blessing or curses. If you have your Bibles and notepads handy, get them ready or listen and review later. But let's pick up the story in Deuteronomy chapter 11, beginning in verse 26. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 26, we read, Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and the curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today to go after other gods which you have not known. Now, my friends, this passage sets the condition for Israel's destiny in the promised land. Moses emphasizes that if the people of God obey his principles, they will be blessed. However, disobedience will lead to curses. Now, here's a brief summary from a messianic viewpoint. Point number one, blessing and curse. Moses declares, see, I am setting before you today a blessing and a curse. The Lord established these rules for obedience. The word today emphasizes the present moment, the crucial time for obedience. Blessing often refers to God's favor, including material well-being and prosperity. If Israel obeys God's commands and treats one another with respect, they will experience this blessing. Point number two, obedience and disobedience. Moses continues, If you listen to the commandments of the Lord your God, which I am commanding you today. He's saying he's emphasizing the importance of obedience. Conversely, disobedience leads to curses. The term curse refers to misfortune or lack of resources. Israel's destiny hinges on their behavior, whether they follow God's way or turn aside to other gods. And then point number three, the new covenant resolution. The tension between Israel's unworthiness and God's unconditional promise is resolved through the new covenant, which we have been discussing in our past episodes. This new covenant instituted by the Messiah Yeshua in Luke 22, verse 20, and in Jeremiah 31, 31. Now, while some Christian understanding assumes that Israel's claim to the land becomes irrelevant, the new covenant retains continuity continuity with God's ancient plan. It doesn't negate Israel's nationalistic aspirations, but rather fulfills them in a spiritual context. My friends, There is no replacement theology. Now, if you haven't listened to our series, Covenant versus Replacement Theology, please take some time to listen and understand this important topic. Now, continuing in verse 29 of Deuteronomy 11. Now it shall be when the Lord your God has brought you into the land which you go to possess, that you shall put the blessing on Mount Gerizim and the curse on Mount Ebal. And they shall not on the other, are they not on the other side of the Jordan 
toward the setting sun in the land of the Canaanites who dwell in the plain opposite Gilgal beside the terebinth trees of Moray. In verse 31, for you will cross over the Jordan and go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you and you will possess it and dwell in it and you shall be careful to observe all the statutes and judgments which I set before you today. Now, my friends, this is a fascinating passage. This passage speaks about placing blessings and curses on two mountains, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. Mount Gerizim symbolizes blessing. According to the Targum of Onkelos, when blessings are pronounced, people should turn their faces toward Mount Gerizim. This hill, though barren like its counterpart, Mount Ebal, was chosen for its southern location, associated with light, life, and blessing in Hebrew thought. Now, Mount Ebal, on the other hand, represents curse. When curses are pronounced, people should face this mountain. The Talmud also supports this view, emphasizing the significance of these two locations in Israel's history. And we'll be going through this throughout the week, the blessings and the curses on these two mountains. Now, Moses reminded the Israelites of God's past blessings and chastenings. He urged them to choose wisely between blessings and curses. This echoes the broader theme of obedience throughout the Bible. Love for God involves both keeping his commandments and recognizing his mighty works. Now, interesting. The re what's interesting is that the rejection of the Messiah by the Jewish nation mirrors their ancient idolatry and rebellion. However, there is hope a future time when they will humble themselves, repent, and trust in the long-rejected mediator for salvation. In that moment, God will deliver them and restore their prosperity. So my friends, even in these ancient texts, we find glimpses of a greater story, the promise of redemption and restoration through the Messiah. My friends, Everything points to Yeshua and everything is spiritual. So my friends, what is your choice today? Blessings or curses? Choose wisely because your eternal life depends on it. Now let's review our half Torah portion for today in Isaiah chapter 54 and we'll be reading verse 11. In Isaiah chapter 54 verse 11 we read, O oh, you afflicted one, tossed with tempests and not comforted, behold, I lay your stones with colorful gems and lay your foundations with sapphires. Now, my friends, this verse is part of a beautiful passage that speaks of God's restoration and favor toward his people. From a messianic perspective, here are three points. Point number one, the symbolic imagery. The Hebrew word for fair colors here refers to the Hebrew word kol, K-O-H-L, a black powder made from antimony or manganese. Women in the East use kol to enhance the brilliance of their eyes. In this context, it symbolizes beauty and purity. Now, sapphires. These precious gemstones represent the azure of the firmament. They evoke the heavenly and eternal aspects of God's promises. Just as sapphire adorned the sapphire throne of the eternal, it signifies divine glory and stability. Now, point number two, the spiritual significance. Beyond literal stones and foundations, this verse points to spiritual realities. 
God promises to transform his afflicted and storm-tossed people into something exceedingly beautiful and stable. The stones represent individual believers, and the foundations symbolize the collective strength of the community. God's work in our lives will result in a glorious and unshakable foundation. And then point number three, the application. My friends, for us today, this verse reminds us that God's work in our lives isn't merely external. He beautifies our hearts, establishes us in faith, and builds a foundation of truth. When life feels stormy and comfort seems distant, we can trust that God is at work, setting our spiritual stones with care. Remember, this commentary goes beyond physical stones. It speaks of the spiritual transformation God brings. So even when we face challenges, we can find hope in his promise of beauty and stability. Now let's review our Brit Hadashah portion for today in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 7, and we'll read verses 37 and through 39. In John 7, 37, we read, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Yeshua stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Yeshua was not yet glorified. Now, my friends, this scene unfolds during the Feast of Tabernacles, also called Sukkot, one of the three major pilgrimage festivals in the Bible, mentioned in Leviticus 23. And we're going to cover it in Deuteronomy 11 this week. Now, picture the bustling streets of Jerusalem, the air thick with anticipation and fragrant smells from street vendors, joy and singing in the streets. It's a grand celebration. The Feast of Tabernacles, my friends, celebrated the fall harvest of grapes and olives, and it was a time of joy and remembrance. During this festival, the priests would perform a water ritual, marching to the pole of Siloam, filling a golden vessel with water, and then pro processing back to the temple. The water symbolized God's provision recalling the water from the rock that sustained the Israelites during their wilderness journey. Yeshua's proclamation on the last and greatest day of this feast, where he stands up and he cries out, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. My friends, imagine the intensity of his voice echoing through the temple courts. The crowd would have turned their attention to this enigmatic teacher, wondering what he meant. But Yeshua wasn't talking about physical thirst. He was pointing to something deeper, a spiritual thirst. He promised that those who believed in him would experience rivers of living water flowing from within them. This living water wasn't mere H2O. It symbolized the Holy Spirit. Just as the water ritual reminded them of God's provision, Yeshua was inviting them and us to receive the ultimate provision, the Spirit of God himself. My friends, this eternal satisfaction, the invitation still stands for us today. My friends, if you are spiritual thirsty, parched by life's challenges, Yeshua says, come to me. He offers more than temporary relief. He provides eternal satisfaction. When we believe in him, the spirit wells up within us, 
quenching our deepest longings. So my friend, if your soul thirsts, come to Yeshua. Drink deeply from the well of living water. So let's end it here for today, my friends. We're going to explore this topic more throughout the week. Take some time to meditate on these words and how they apply to your life. Pray for us in this message to go out and pray for those who are scattered throughout the world seeking their Messiah so that they will return to the Torah and their Hebraic roots. Share this message with your friends and family. Post a link on your social media pages and help us spread the gospel. You never know whose life you may affect. Remember to visit us at mymdi.org. Take one of our free classes, download the daily Torah schedule. You can also order some of our books there. And if the Lord inspires you, please consider becoming a monthly sponsor so we can reach more people with these messages. Just click the giving menu option or donate button on the website. Tomorrow, we will continue our studies. Until then, Shalom Aleichem, blessings and Shalom, my friends.